We never cuddle anymore. I just want to cuddle with you. Let's just cuddle you and me. Shh, it's okay. It's okay. I really do love you. I know I say mean things about you, but I really do love you. You're so cute. Mm -hmm. You want to try my glasses? Oh, yeah, let's try some glasses. Oh, look at me. I'm Kevin. I'm a big dork. <laughs> So disrespectful. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 13. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, 13 is a bad number. That means something bad's probably going to happen today during this episode. Uh, maybe Kevin will die. I don't know. Maybe he'll just, um, he'll just be sitting there chomping on the treats that I left there for him because I'm so super nice. Uh, he'll just be chomping away and then just... And he'll pass out. And then I'll, you know what I'll do? I'll make him uh, one of the trinkets on my shelf. I'll stuff him. I'm going to stuff you. You want to be stuffed? Yeah, Kevin, I'm going to stuff you right up. I'm going to turn you into a stuffed cat with like a really dumb expression. You know, like when they stuff, <laughs> when they stuff dead animals. Taxidermy is what I'm, <laughs> it's like the technical term. So when they taxidermy an animal... <laughs> that the verb when they taxidermy you um so usually when they do that to like bobcats and stuff they have like a super vicious scary expression on their face like like they're about to attack right they're like mid attack like like you go to bass pro shop and you're walking around looking at all the taxidermy animals they're like mid mid attack like you're there just shopping for a nice polo shirt or like some guns and then there's a bobcat just hanging over your head, just like, <laughs> that's not the sound that bobcats make. Uh, but anyway, they look cool, right? They look so cool because they're mid, mid pounce. Uh, but that's not what we're going to do for Kevin when we taxidermy him. He's going to um, like have his tongue sticking out the side of his face and his eyes crossed, just like, that's going to be him. And then I'm going to put you right there. Your stuffed, fluffy self is going to go right there and I'm still going to talk to you. Um... Oh, here we go. Computer's taking off. Anyway, welcome to episode 13. I didn't really plan out this one. Sometimes I give myself little like, bullet points, like, talk about this, talk about that. I didn't really do that today. Um, what are you doing behind me? I don't like you behind me. Don't trust him at all. Also, you knocked down my classic April O'Neil uh, action figure. Dude, this is a classic. It's basically an antique. So anyway, I had an audition today, and I realized something during this audition. Something that I do at every audition, but it didn't really, <laughs> I didn't really, stop, what is that sound? Don't make that sound anymore. Whatever in my house is making that dring sound, don't make it anymore. I don't know if it's one of you Roombas, I don't know if it's Alexa, don't need to talk back, it's fine. I don't know what's making the sound, don't make the sound anymore, it's very distracting. Why are you trashing my scene? Anyway. So I realized when I go into an audition, I enter the room like I'm an alien visiting Earth for the first time. A super benevolent, happy to be there alien. I know Aliens was the last episode, but no, two episodes ago. But guess what? We're back again. We've looped around. We've circled back. I'm an alien when I walk into an audition room because here's how, here's how it goes. First of all, it's a very odd situation anyway because it's, it's like a job interview that I go on all the time. But you never know what to expect and you're always going to be doing something different. So I go to the place where the auditions are being held and they put me in a waiting room and I go into the waiting room and I wait. I wait until they call my name. Um... And that's where you like size up the competition. You're like, oh, wow, well, she's a lot prettier than me. Probably going to hire her. Oh, wow, she's got really soft hair. I would love to pet her hair right now, but I'm not going to because that'd be weird. Um, but they're probably going to hire her instead of me because of her soft hair. And then all those uh, sort of anxious thoughts just enter my brain while I'm sitting in the waiting room. And then they call me back and they're like, Lisa, okay, we're ready for you. I'm like, okay, great. And um, I just I pop up just full of energy, so much energy. And <laughs> I realize this about me. When they open the door to the audition room, 
it's generally just like a big open room with one table and the table usually has like four people sitting at it, staring at you. And then one dude behind a camera. That's usually the audition setup. And today I noticed that I walk into the room and I look around like, whoa, (laughs) whoa, this is, is this a room? Whoa, is that a table? This is into, oh, you're handing me a paper with words on it. I've heard of words before. Oh, hello, humans. I've heard rumors and tales of humans before. So nice to meet you for the first time ever. I'm just like, what am I even doing? I'm like so overly excited to be there that I'm acting like, uh, like not a normal, like not a normal, like a very abnormal. Oh, my ears keep going out. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just like, oh, look at this tape on the ground in the shape of a T. Do you want me to stand there? Hey, obviously they do. That's called a mark. Go stand on your mark. I've stood on one since I was 12. I know how all of this works. I'll stare at the camera and be like, whoa, what a cool apparatus you have pointed at me. That's fascinating. It's called just a basic camera. Sometimes it's an iPhone. Sometimes it's just a dude with an iPhone just pointed at me. We're going to record your audition. What? Oh, that sounds great. I'm so surprised at all of these things that I've done 8,000 times in my life, but for some reason it's brand new. Um... <laughs> I hope I didn't embarrass myself. I mean, I probably do a little bit every time, but I like to think it's endearing. I like to think that, uh, you know, they find that sweet and cute. But I just can't be cool. I can't be cool walking into an audition. I have to act like uh, it's my first time ever in a conference room. And then walking out every single time when I walk out of the audition, I'm like, is this a push or a pull? (laughs) Okay, have a great day. It's been wonderful. Please hire me. It has, definitely has an air of desperation to it, which is not ideal. I'm trying to work on that. I'm trying to work on that. Not be desperate. You know, just be cool. Just play it cool. Just go to the audition. Do your thing. Do your best. This goes all the way back to childhood, where your parents are like, "You don't have to be perfect. Just do your best." That's all we care about. I'm trying to tell myself that now. I'm trying to parent myself. It doesn't matter. Just do your best. Go into the audition. Talk about how great McDonald's fries are and then get out and forget about the fries altogether. Just forget about it. But I can't. I'll think about it every minute of every day. Um, That's not even what I wanted to talk about today. I, oh boy, do I have an important thing to talk about. Guys, these floss sticks that are littered around the world. Huh? Everywhere I go. Like on the ground, there's a floss stick. You know what I'm talking about. So we as a human species decided that it is way too much work to pull out a string from a box and wedge it between our teeth to get all the popcorn kernels out. So, uh, you know, the people at the, the, the big dentist corporations are like, we got you. And they put floss in a, in a stick. This is what it looks like. It looks like this. And then there's a string here and you take this and you and you get all the popcorn kernels out of your teeth. Um, and this is generally something I do at home in my bathroom. I like to floss my teeth at home, in my bathroom, alone. However, I've noticed, guys, I cannot be the only one who sees these, okay? Look, I'm no Sherlock Holmes. I'm no Shirley Holmes. I don't wear a hat with two flaps, okay? I don't wear a hat with two flaps. I'm not even observant. I'm gullible as hell. Uh, When Sean proposed to me, there were at least 800 clear signs that he was going to propose to me. And whoop, soared over my head. Soared over my head. We, he took me to a, this is just one example. He took me to a very romantic beach setting like a year into our dating, which is, you know, right around that time, he already knew my ring size. Like we'd already talked about it. Like all the signs were there. He takes me to a very romantic getaway. We're on the beach. We're on like a cliff and he needs to get something out of his suitcase. (laughs) Hey, I got to get something out of my suitcase real quick. Um, and while he's doing this, he goes, Hey Lisa, look at that mountain over there. Isn't it cool? And I'm like, Whoa, that is a really cool mountain. And I just stare at the mountain for like, couple minutes just wow it's so tall and pointy look at that that's a great mountain um while he was retrieving the ring out of the suitcase obviously like obviously (laughs) that's what he was doing and that was just one of many um one of many tip-offs but that that didn't even register with me I'm just not 
I'm not all there all the time. I'm not super alert and I'm very trusting and I'm very gullible. So even for a not observant person like me, I'm seeing these floss sticks littered across America. What is going on? This might not shock you, but it shocks me. And let me tell you why. First of all, uh, I'm a very responsible person. I generally listen and am very afraid of breaking rules. So when my dentist tells me to do something, I usually do it because I'm terrified of whatever the punishment will be. The Rammies. I'm afraid of the ramifications. I don't like the Rammies. I'm scared of the Rammies. So I will do anything I can to not experience Rammies. Uh, so I'll floss and I'll do the thing and I'll brush my teeth and I'll do the whitening and all the, I'll do it. But I'm, a, but I'm like on the, the far side of the scale when it comes to responsible. I'd say most people fall on the scale just like, like below that. You know, like if it, was a, if it was a one through 10 scale, I'd probably be like a nine, like pretty dang responsible. But most people I think are between like a five and a seven. Um, so I'd say that people floss, most people floss some of the time. I think is a pretty accurate statement. Um, <laughs> so then it takes a very interesting, responsible person to remember to take floss with them in the first place. Think about it. They're like, okay, I need to pack floss with me. I'm going out to dinner. I'm going on a job interview. I'm going on an audition where I'm going to act like an alien for the first time who's never been, I'm going to, I'm going to go to an audition where I'm going to act like an alien who's been to earth for the first time ever just today. Um, so I'm going to make sure I bring my floss sticks so that I can floss. That's a very responsible person bringing floss sticks with them. However, it takes a very irresponsible person to just throw it on the ground when they're done. So who are these people? Who are these people who are so responsible that they bring floss sticks with them to floss on the go, but they're so irresponsible that they just litter on the ground. They throw the stick on the ground. I don't think these things are biodegradable, okay? I don't know, haven't looked into it, but I'm pretty sure they're not. And I see them everywhere. Who are these people? Who are these people? So irresponsible and so responsible at the same time. Who are they? I need to know. Please leave a comment. If you are somebody who takes floss sticks with them, flosses on the gun, and then whoop, throws it on the ground. Throws it on the ground. Let me know. I need to talk to you. I need to bring you on my podcast and interview you because this, these are things that I care about. Um... But anyway, got this uh, inner ear problem happening. It's like two, it's like if your ear is here, it's like two inches in, like, like it's in there and it's all clogged. Uh, and I haven't been able to hear a lot of things, probably why I yell so much and why I'm such a loud person. Uh, it's probably why Kevin left. He was here and he was enjoying um, being part of the podcast. And then I probably was super loud and he peaced out. And it's because I can't hear. I can't hear. I can't hear nothing. All right. Conversation starters, nope. Icebreakers, done with them. I'm here for pot stirrers and boat rockers. That's what I've decided uh, that I'm into. I'm not here to like go, okay, so say you're hosting a dinner party. I don't generally host dinner parties because I don't live in a Victorian manor where a murder's about to happen. And then everyone loses their mind and all the doors are locked suddenly. And people start pointing fingers, and then the lights flicker and they go off. And then you hear a distant scream and one by one people start dying. And then in the end you find out it was just, it was all planned to find out if you really are worthy of the family jewels, great grandson. Which you're not because you killed three people during the investigation. This is, now you're going to jail, no jewels for you. So I don't host uh, dinner parties because I'm not in a Victorian mansion uh, with uh, hosting a murder mystery party, but anyway. Say you, I have people over for dinner. Come over, eat pizza. I ain't going to cook. I don't cook. But I can pick up a pizza. I sure can. I can pick it right up. I'll get you the pizza. You come over. You sit. We'll have a chat. We'll have a couple beers. We'll chat. We'll do stuff. So then in this situation where I have friends over, like a decent group of friends over, I don't like to ask people how they're doing, how their job's going, whatever. That's, I, don't, I don't care about that. I like to start by saying something that begins with, did you hear? 
you can say absolutely anything you want if you start with, did you hear? You can say any damn thing, anything. So I like to test the waters with a, did you hear, uh, that's pretty believable, right? Like, um, hey, did you hear they're trying to get uh, America on the metric system? And then you take a sip. Hold on, let me get my sip. The sip is crucial. You got to take the sip. It's during the sip where you see, you see if people are reacting, you know? You see if people are on board. If eyebrows are getting raised, if eyebrows are shooting up, then you've done it right. Okay, so I start with something like, oh, did you hear the American metric system? And then I sip, and then I wait to see if people are reacting. Oh. Oh, eyebrows are shooting up. Oh, they're, oh, they're reacting. Oh, they're reacting a lot. Okay, and then I sit and I wait for that little discussion to die down. And then when that's and then when that's done, I like to come in a little bit harder. <laughs> Cuz that was fun. I got to watch all my friends uh debate a thing, and that's pretty believable, you know, whatever metric system, okay. And then you hit them with Did you hear they're trying to switch to an 8-day week? And you sip and you wait. Now, it's important that people have had a couple drinks beforehand. It helps them loosen up and get angrier faster. And that's good for entertainment. See, these are like, um, these are grenades. These are conversational grenades that I'm lobbing. I'm lobbing them at the dinner table. But you got to be careful with grenades, just like war. Dinner parties are like war. The way I do it. <laughs> so I love the conversational grenade. But here's the thing, it's got to hit. If the conversational grenade doesn't hit, it explodes to the side. People are just like, you're lying. You're trying to, you're dumb. Like this, you're an a-hole. Like this is, you're just lying. You're full of it's that, that just shut up Lisa let us eat our pizza go back to talking about our jobs but if it hits and then suddenly you got people like what eight day week what are they gonna call it what about our kids do we have to work an extra day do they go to school an extra day I heard that the, the school's going down to four days a week four days a week our kids are only gonna go four days what am I gonna do when I'm at work and they can't go the other? I don't know it's the government's fault blah 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 and then you're just you're sipping you're back and you're like You're like the little girl with the house on fire behind you. Your conversational grenade was very accurate and it has exploded. And now you're just a king sitting back. You're at, the, uh, you're at that Coliseum, that you're at that big round place. You're sitting there, you're watching the lions go at it. It's great, super fun. Um, but you just gotta be careful, you know, with your pot stirring questions. Um, you know, you can't be selecting. So it has to be something that makes people say, oh, yeah, I did hear something about that. This is outrageous. You know, something very believable, like doing away with daylight savings or time zones or New Jersey, you know, things that frankly we probably should get rid of. You know, these are good little softballs to lob at your dinner party. It can't be so outrageous. It certainly cannot be like a celebrity death. Like, did you hear such and such died? No, because that's just an Alexa Bello away. Immediately, somebody's going to be like, Alexa, did such and such die? And, you're like, blah, blah, and then you immediately find out. You don't want them talking to Alexa. You don't want them Googling whatever you say. You don't want them Googling it. So, you know, why don't you just confiscate their phones right at the beginning? That's also something you could do. Uh, they walk in your house, you say, I'm going to need your phone. It's like a concert. <laughs> I'm going to need your phone. And you put it in a little, a little black zipper, uh, and you put it, put it in a little uh, zipper bag, and you bury it in the backyard, and you're like, you can have that when you leave. Anyway, <laughs> did you hear that they're going to cut off California and push it into the ocean? You know, I did hear something about that. Uh, but yeah, so that's just a new fun thing. You can try your next get together a long time ago, like way during the early days of the Internet. I thought it would be really fun to come up with uh, something that I called the Society of Misinformation and just spread ridiculous lies across the Internet. Go on like every Wikipedia page, just add something so outrageous that no one would believe it or maybe they would believe it. And I thought that would be really funny to do back in the early days of the internet. And then guess what? It actually happened, like for realsies. So I don't know if there's like another society that beat me to it or if it's just mankind. 
I think mankind might be the society of misinformation. I wanted to start an underground movement, and I think it's an overground movement. I think it's an, it's an above-ground movement that's happening all around us all the time. Um, this... Anyway, uh, episode 13, we're doing it, we're rolling along. I have a couple upcoming guests who are going to host the podcast uh, with me, just like for an episode here and there. My friend Brendan is the lead singer of a band called Nocturnal Affair, and he's super funny. He's so funny, you guys. I cannot wait to get him on here. My friend Steven uh, Wright has a couple amazing stories. I want him to come on here and tell me. I just want funny stories, you know? I'm not here to be like, so, um, you know, so tell me, what do you do? And like, how did, how are you inspired as a kid? And like, well, I don't care about those questions, okay? This is not a normal podcast. I want silliness. I want funny. I want someone to sit in that chair and tell me a funny story that I've never heard before. And I want to, I want to raffle. I want to raffle and I want a law. I want to raffle and I want to law. Um, so, cause that's what we're here. That's what we're here to do. We're here to raffle and we're here to lull. We're here to, uh, God dang it. This camera stop. Please hold, please hold, please hold. There we go. Um, we're here to raffle and we're here to lull. That's what we do. And, oh, gee, clothes are falling off. All right. Um, But anyway, love you guys so much. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. It's been real. Love you. Bye. Kevin, I would like to serenade you. Are you ready? Okay. You know, some applause would be nice. It's fine. It's really fine. You know what? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You know what? Why? I don't need. I don't need to be here.